When you start to shake with the shivers, when you get a wobble in your tum tum tum, when you feel so ill and you need a pill, that's just when you need a good chum. So calling flying doctor, calling flying doctor, through the air, you get your call and he'll be right there, the flying doctor. The flying doctor was exploring by submarine the depth of a lake in the snowy mountains area, looking for a giant lake monster. He saw signs that the monster was close by. Suddenly, the submarine was knocked up and over from behind. Then it dived down and down into the mud of the bed of the lake, trapping its brave occupants. The flying doctor. When the submarine buried its nose in the mud at the bottom of the lake, the doctor was bruised, but not hurt. Mud covered the plastic windows of the sub, and muddy brown water swirled above him. And, worst of all, a trickle of yellow water ran through a nasty-looking crack in the metal casing at the side, and was forming a sticky puddle under his feet. The doctor's years of scientific training helped him now, and he kept calm, as he pushed the driving lever over into the reverse position. Then he accelerated. There was a muffled roar under the water, and the whole submarine shook like a vintage car. But nothing else happened. Its nose seemed to be firmly embedded. The doctor looked over the control board and found the button marked emergency signal. He pressed it. There was a scraping sound, and a trap door on the sub's tail opened and a float with a flag released from it shot up to the surface of the water in a cloud of bubbles. From his car on the shore, Sir Thomas Persian, the Minister of Fishery, saw a disturbance on the water, and then the signal flag popped to the surface. Oh dear, the doctor appears to be in trouble. And he leaned across and told his secretary to ring the rescue squad. The sticky water was rising around the doctor's feet but at last he saw the big hook lowered through the water just in front of him. He caught hold of the front of the submarine, and next instant, the doctor found himself being hauled up to safety on a rescue boat. Two hours later, the flying doctor was sitting in Sir Thomas Persham's comfortable office. It's really most disappointing, Sir Thomas said. We had hoped, Doctor, that you, with your great knowledge of nature study, would have been able to speak with the monster and find out where it came from and what it wanted. Sir Thomas led the doctor again to the big model of the whole Snowy Mountain scheme. This is where I would like you to go next. It's the main tunnel from powerhouse number three. This is where the serpent has been seen twice, late at night. And we thought you might care to wait there tonight till it shows up again. That evening, the flying doctor prepared for a lonely night in the tunnel. He'd been supplied with a nice bed hidden behind some air conditioning machinery, and a supper laid out, and one or two interesting pamphlets on fish breeding to while away the time. It was very quiet in the tunnel, and pitch dark, except for the single light from the doctor's shaded reading lamp. Ten o'clock came, then eleven, then midnight. The doctor read his pamphlets but kept listening. Some of the pamphlets really were not very exciting and once the doctor dozed off for a moment, goodness knows how much later, he suddenly sat bolt upright, his ears pricked, his eyes wide. A sound of heavy breathing came from the darkness in front of him. Calling flying doctor. Calling flying doctor. Will the monster attack the flying doctor? Don't miss the next exciting episode of The Flying Doctor.